taken through our senses is considered food in the yoga tradition. So whatever we're listening to, watching, people were around, all of that is considered food. And so in the yoga um, tradition that I follow, one of the um, yogic texts written thousands of years ago is called the Upanishads. So it's a yoga philosophy text. And it talks about this and it talks about um, what is called the food sheath. And the food sheath is basically our physical body. Everything that we can touch is considered the food sheath. And so all the things that we're experiencing and taking in become who we are. So the people we're around affect our nervous system, right? So that might be a positive thing that might help our nervous system feel good. We're around certain people. It makes us be, feel safe and calm. Other people might get us a little kind of jacked up and especially around the holidays, um, you know, and the times that we're in, I know there's a lot of, a lot of conflict going on. So also the news that we're watching that can affect our tissues, can affect our nervous system. And of course, the foods that we eat. So I'll share a little bit about, from my teacher, about how certain foods can affect our bodies energetically. So for example, grounding foods will build stability in our tissues. It'll help build our blood and create strength in our tissues. And these are foods that grow close to the earth. So all of the things that we think of, they're either really close to the earth or in the ground, like our root vegetables, even things like cauliflower, squash, cabbage, onions, potatoes. These are foods that help gather, center, and ground our energy, just like our yoga poses that we use to help ground our energy. And then there's another classification of poses, and that's nourishing foods. Nourishing foods are foods that grow in or live in water. So rice kind of grows in the water, um, as well as sea vegetables, um, sea algaes, and fish. All of those kinds of things are said to help or calm our nervous system and nourish the nervous system and our tissues. And then finally, the third classification are cleansing foods. So these are foods that help us detoxify the body and our internal organs, our connective tissues, and our cells. These are um, helpful for removing unwanted toxins that are lodged within the body, and it helps purify um, and release stagnation in the body. Good for if we have liver stuff going on. So I know some of you guys are familiar with that kind of concept. These are the leafy greens. So things like lettuces, and especially dandelion, that's a good one, and herbs. Herbal tinctures are good for detoxifying and cleansing. So those are a little few little tidbits from my teacher today. We're going to work on kind of um, poses that help stimulate the area of the abdominal organs. So yoga can be really beneficial for our digestion because the things like twisting, forward folds, back bends all stimulate the area of our abdomen and can help the fascia in that area. So if we're under a lot of tension, we're under people that are affecting our body in a negative way, um, the tissues can get really bound up around our intestines and around our stomach, and that can affect how well we're digestion, uh, digesting, and we'll be more prone to indigestion if we're around that kind of environment. So we'll help soothe it today and stimulate it, and we'll do some restoring at the end um, just to help really calm the nervous system. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the mic, and I just want you guys to let me know if you can hear me. I hope it works. Fingers crossed. Fingers and toes crossed. <laughs> can you guys still hear me? Yes. yes. Yay! Okay. Does it sound okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So feel free if you do get reverberation to mute your end before we start. So if someone wants to do that, if you're not reverberating, you don't have to do that. Do you want it? Sound okay? Yeah, let's mute it. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. Are you? Oh, are you hearing it a little bit? A little bit. Okay. Let's make sure you can still hear me. You can still hear me. Okay. All right. Going back to the mat. You can come. 
come onto your bellies. Oh, no, sorry, on your backs, on your backs. Okay, so we're going to come on our back. And you can either have your legs out or flat. And we'll just take a couple of moments, put your hands somewhere on the lower belly region, kind of navel center or below. And we'll start by just taking some nice, smooth, even breaths into the belly. So our breath is also an important role in our digestion. If our breath is irregular, um, that can also cause us to feel more tension in the body and more prone to indigestion if we're not breathing properly. So imagine that you're kind of filling the pot of your belly as you breathe in and breathe out. There'll be time and practice today when we engage the belly muscles. But right now, just allow for that softening. Let's take about three more cycles. We allow this little couple of minutes of breathing to be like our palate cleanser from life before yoga and now into our practice. Okay, we're gonna do a little soft belly massage. So take one of your hands and we're gonna start making a circle on the belly. And we're gonna go around the navel center, kind of following the corners of the bony structures. So if you feel like where the hip bones are, we're gonna go right inside the hip bones. And then at the top, we're gonna go right inside the rib cage around the solar plexus and just circle around. Knowing that we're tracing the pathway of our digestive tract as we do this. In yoga, we're always talking about energy, the directions that energy moves. The direction of um, digestion is called samana, S-A-M-A-N-A. And it's an energy that helps our food kind of get absorbed into our body. So keep massaging. And as that food gets absorbed into our body, the body takes what it needs, what is useful. But then the rest of it, it's got to process through our liver, got to help us kind of eliminate what is not useful to our body. And the more stagnant our energy is, the harder it is for our body to do its job in assimilating and eliminating. Okay, go ahead and let that go. And we're gonna bring the knees into the chest. Let's bring both of those knees in. And we're gonna work this with this uh, movement we call the Apanasana. So we're gonna inhale those knees away. And as you exhale, pull your low belly down toward the ground to make space and then pull those knees in, compacting that lower belly. And then repeat that. Knees move away as you inhale. As you exhale, pull the low belly down first, make space, and then pull those knees in and compact. Two more like that. As you compact, see if you can kind of squeeze out all of your breath at the same time. Last one. Good. And now we're going to take the legs up straight toward the ceiling. Cross your right ankle or shin in front. And then we're going to pull those knees down and into the chest with the legs crossed. So inhale. As you exhale, compact the lower belly, pull those knees in towards your chest, and then try to press down into your lower back. And then repeat this a few more times. Inhale, a little bit, the knees move away. Exhale, pull 
pull the navel down, pull the low belly down, squeeze it in, and press the lower back down into the ground. That helps activate the lower belly muscles, apana. And apana is the direction of elimination. It's a downward uh, movement in the body. Downward flow of energy. So we want our digestion to help the food go in, get assimilated, and then properly eliminate. Okay, release and switch the crossing of your ankles. We'll repeat that. Inhale, exhale, pull down into that low belly, give that good squeeze, and repeat. So of course, exercise is very beneficial for our digestion, especially if we're doing these kinds of yoga movements that work on these directions of energy in the body. So keep going a few more rounds. All this work is very cleansing for the body. So not only help us digest our food, but process our life experiences. So the yogis say that if our system is all gunked up, it results in toxicity. And they call that AMA. A-M-A, -A, AMA, is like a buildup of toxicity in the body. One more time. Squeeze it in this time, hold it in, compact the belly, try to really squeeze all your breath out. And then we're gonna let it all go. Let the feet come down, slide the legs out, and take a couple of breaths into your belly after all that work. One more. All right, we're going to bend those knees, set the feet flat. If you have a pillow, you might want to take it out of the way. So we're going to do a little bit of arch and curl, a little bit of bridge work, and sometimes it'll be too much on the neck to have a pillow. Take your arms into bowl post position. So your elbows are in line with your shoulders, and the palms are face up on the ground. Good. And then we're going to inhale, tip the pelvis forward and arch your back. Notice there's a kind of stretch into the belt. And then as we exhale, we're going to flatten, curl, curl the tailbone up, and press the lower back down. And now let's continue that a few more cycles. Inhale, arch. Exhale, flatten, kind of curl that tailbone up. So we keep going. So the better our digestion, the more we can cheat a bit, right? So if we had some really heavy foods during our Thanksgiving holiday, if our digestion was strong, we could probably get away with it and not feel so bad, right? But if our digestion is weak, um, we're going to feel more of the effects of that toxicity, of things like the heavier foods, the sugary type things, the desserts. So we've got to be mindful in our consumption of those things. We're going to do three more cycles just like this. Same with our interactions. If our interactions are hard to digest, uh, the healthier our nervous system is, the better we'll be able to handle it. We might not react to uh, whoever it is, Uncle Joe, who's causing a scene, right? Whatever it might be in your family. Just making that up, by the way. Uh, so we got to keep our tissues healthy. All right, now pause for a moment. We're going to turn that into a bridge pose. Uh, on the next cycle. So inhale, tip your pelvis forward, arching your back. As you exhale, start to flatten your low back, press your low back into the ground, turn on your abdominal muscles, and then start to peel your hips off the ground, lifting those hips up all the way. And then we're going to slowly come 
down top of the spine. Lay those vertebrae down one away from the next. And when you get down to the bottom, arch your back as you inhale. Exhale, flatten. Pull the belly toward the spine and then curl that tailbone up slowly. Lifting one vertebra at a time so you get all the way up toward your top of your spine. And then slowly coming down. Let's do two more cycles like that. Tailbone tips forward as you arch. And flatten and curl up. So kind of think about it as using those abdominal muscles rather than just letting them be relaxed here. One more round. And then we're gonna come all the way back down. And just drop everything down, take a breath or two. Let your arms come down, hands on the belly, and let's take a couple of breaths there again. So let that be a like, really soothing breath into your belly. All right, we're going to come to our side, turn over onto one side, and come on up, and we'll do a seated posture from here. So feel free to sit up onto a prop if that feels best for you. Cross leg if it's comfortable for you finding the tops of your sit bones, really lengthen up through your spine. So good posture, of course, makes space for our digestion. We're gonna do some kind of belly turning here. So we're just gonna draw those circles with the rib cage. And see if you can kind of isolate it into that abdomen area. So rather than circle the torso like this, I want you to think about it coming from your belly, like you're belly dancing. So channel your inner belly dancer today. <laughs> Circling that belly around. So think about it as kind of massaging the vital organs here as we turn. That's it. Hopefully you guys didn't have a big meal. This is a kind of a weird time, right? At one o'clock is our lunch time. Go ahead, go the other direction. Circle it the other way. It is always best to not have a big meal before we do our yoga practice. Something light is usually fine, like a little soup or some little snack is okay, but we don't want to have a big heavy meal before we're doing our practice. All right, go ahead and come back up. Let's inhale, reach the arms up. And as you exhale, we're gonna turn toward the right and into a twist. Sit up nice and tall, push down into the ground, lengthen up through your spine. As you exhale, see if you could turn a little more. And we're gonna squeeze into that low belly, maybe even a little pelvic floor as we exhale. Hold it here for two more breaths. As you exhale, think about lifting pelvic floor, lifting low belly, give a little squeeze, and then one more cycle. And on your next inhale, unwind back to the center, hands on the belly, and just take a few breaths there before we do the other side. So we think about these twists as kind of massaging into these internal organs. We know how good it feels when we get our muscles massaged. Well, our organ body needs that stimulation as well. When you think about it, when we take a twist, we get this like turning of the tissues right around the organs or fascia. And that twisting helps like get more blood flow and circulation, less stagnation. Let's do that twist on the other side. Inhale, reach the arms up. 
Exhale, twisting to the other side. Let's hold it here for at least three breaths. Push down into the ground, up through the crown. And as you exhale, lift pelvic floor, low belly, give a squeeze to that lower belly. Last one. On your next inhalation, let's come back to the center. Hands on the belly, take a few breaths here. Of course, there are certain things that are helpful for digestion. We know that things like ginger is good for digestion, peppermint, so we can rely on our herbals. I'm also gonna to try to remember to put in the newsletter, which will hopefully be out this week, um, a recipe for digestive tea, which is fennel, cumin, and one other thing, which I can't remember at the moment, but I'll get that for you guys. Fennel seeds, really good. You can chew on those after a heavy meal can help with the bloating. Okay, let's release, come into our tabletop position. Have those knees if you like, especially up there on the hard floor. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. And let's go ahead and do a few rounds of cat cow. We're going to take an inhale, and as you exhale, I want you to think about lifting that pelvic floor, squeeze that lower belly, and then come into the rounded position. And then continue. Inhale, arch. Exhale, pelvic floor, low belly, squeeze as you round. So we can get that squeeze as you round, a little bit more cleansing for the abdominal organs, a little bit more intentional than when we just do this without thinking about it. Three more rounds. After your third round, go ahead and take the brief child's pose. Whenever we are in a forward folding position such as this, our belly on our thighs, we breathe into the belly. There's an element of massage there as well. All right, go ahead, come back up into your tabletop pose. Now we're gonna alternate between moving back toward a child's pose, not all the way. And then as you come forward, we're gonna bring your knee into your chest and squeeze that low belly. So knee comes back, we're gonna inhale as we move the hips back. Exhale, squeeze that knee in and feel like you're compacting that lower belly. So let's repeat a few more of those. Can you get as much of that breath out as you can? Let's do one more on each side. Now we're going to repeat it just one more time and we're going to try to hold it. So hips back, inhale, exhale, come forward, squeeze and hold. Push through your palms, squeeze the belly. And when you're ready to switch out, inhale, come back, exhale, other side. Squeeze it in, hold it in. And when you're ready to release, make your way back one more time to child's pose. Rest your head on your hands. Let's take two more breaths there. And then go ahead and come back up into your tabletop pose. 
We're going to inhale in table. And as you exhale, do that squeeze of the belly and pull back into a downward facing dog. Really squeeze that belly as you get up there. And then two more rounds. Knees down, inhale. Exhale, squeeze that low belly, lift up. One more time. Stay in your dog. Keep your knees bent and walk your hands back to your feet. Bring your hands to your hips, press through those feet. Inhale, we're gonna come all the way up to stand. That belly's gonna get a workout today. All right, hold it here for another breath. Okay, we're gonna bend the knees like you're doing chair pose, we're gonna face sideways. And we're going to put our elbows right on our knees. And you can hold on to opposite elbows if you like, or just let your palms be together, whatever feels natural here for you. We're going to hold it here, tuck your chin in so you're not keeping your neck to look up at you. Send your hip creases back. Take an inhale, deep into your belly, and then exhale, squeeze. Two more. Try to finish that exhale all the way. One more round. And then we release. Let's inhale, reach those arms all the way up. And as you get to the top, take a little back bend, which stretches that belly open. And then exhale, release, arms down at your side. Good. So work with the belly in yoga and Ayurveda. Of course, we talk about this as the home of our fire, fire in our belly. And we want our digestive fire to be strong. That fire is weak, we won't be able to digest as well. Doing all the stuff we're doing today is said to help increase our agni, our digestive fire. Let's do a couple rounds of sun, half sun salutations. As we fold, give that squeeze to your belly. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold, squeezing the belly in. All the air out. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. And we'll take a little back bend at the top of our inhale. And then exhale, release, hands down to your heart. Now, of course, if anything doesn't feel good in here, don't do all that squeezing. If you have any surgeries or anything like that, I didn't really ask you guys about that. But you guys have been practicing long enough, I think you know to take care of yourself. Two more rounds like that. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, little back bend. And exhale, hands to your heart. One more time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up, little back bend, and exhale, release, arms down. Good. So we're going to fold onto the knees again like we did earlier. We're going to have the option of taking that a little deeper. So we're going to bend. You can either stay with your elbows on your thighs, kind of stick your tailbone out behind you. Those of you who want to go farther, lay your belly on your thighs. Maybe your arms come to the ground or wrap around your back. You've got a good bend in your knees here, okay? Good bend in your knees. And then three breaths. Press through your feet. Try to fill the belly on the inhale. Exhale, squeeze it out. Last breath.
And then let's inhale, reach the arms all the way up again. Exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, let's go through a full sun style. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to your halfway lift. And we'll step back to plank pose, dropping those knees as an option. Lower all the way down. Now, if we're doing our cobra as well, we're going to get a good stretch in the belly. So first, stretch your legs back. Pull your palms toward your feet. Pull your belly forward and lift up into a low cobra. Pull your hands toward you. Try to stretch from your low belly. And then take a little sway side to side. Just to kind of stretch out that belly a little more. And then release. Downward facing dog. Knees first as an option. And then we're going to take a breath there on your exhale. Squeeze your belly. Inhale, look forward. Walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, rise up. Take that little back bend if you like. And hands to your heart. One more time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step back, plank pose. Knees can come down, lower. Stretch your legs back, pull your hands toward your toes, stretch your belly. And downward facing dog right into it this time. Hold for a breath. And then inhale, looking forward, walk your feet forward, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Good, take a pause here. And then from here, we're gonna bend those knees again, come back into that chair position, hands on your thighs. Send your hip creases back, stick your booty out behind you. That helps lengthen your lower back. And then we're going to put the right forearm down, bring your left hand onto your hip or onto your thigh, and turn towards your left. Press down into your right uh, forearm and push into your left palm to help you turn. Keep sending your tailbone back and your head forward. So our spine is long. If you want, take that left arm and reach it straight up toward the ceiling. If that's too much, keep it down. Forearm presses, top arm lifts. One more breath. Good, release and just fold over your legs. Let your head release, shake it out. Good, hands to hips, press through your feet, stand all the way up. Good, take a pause there for a breath. So these, all these twists and this increasing of the fire also said to help burn off mental impurities. So sometimes we might feel a little brighter in our head, a little less brain fog when we cleanse our bodies in this way. Other side, bend your knees. Left forearm onto your thighs. Right hand onto your hip or on your thigh. And lengthen first, stick your booty out. Reach your head forward and then push into that left forearm, turn. Keep lengthening. Maybe that arm comes up. Push down to help you twist. Twist more from your abdomen than from your arm and your shoulder. Good. 
Good. Bring your knees fold forward over your legs. They can be bent or you can straighten them a little bit more. Hands to your hips. Push in your feet. Rise all the way up to stand and take a breath. All right. So we'll do one more standing pose and we're going to come down, do some work on the ground. We're going to do our Agni Sara practice. This is something that I always recommend for helping improve our digestion. So we're going to widen the feet. Bring our hands onto the thighs. Stick your booty out behind you. So it starts out like a cat cow, but we really want to get a sense of pulling the abdomen back toward the spine and compressing the contents of the abdomen. So let's inhale and arch the back a little bit. As you exhale, curl your tailbone and your head in. Squeeze the pelvic floor and kind of suck your navel back, suck your guts back, squeeze, and then release. Inhale, look forward, arch your back. Exhale, round, squeeze, and pull the contents of your abdomen toward the back of your body. One more round, inhale. And exhale, last time. Good, inhale, come up to stand. Hands on the belly, take a few breaths. You might be feeling this tomorrow, using a lot of those abdominal muscles. One more breath. All right, step those feet back in. Let's make our way to the ground. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, halfway. Step back to dog. We're going to bring our knees down to the ground. And we're going to take a child's pose in a moment. But we're going to try a little bit of a cleansing. It's called a Kriya. In yoga, it's called a Kriya. We're going to try to put our fists in our lower abdomen. Now, some of us are going to want to block or a pillow or a blanket for your head. So put that in front of you. And we're going to try to lift the belly up, lift your guts up, stick your fists in that lower abdomen, widen the knees, and then put your forehead onto that block. And you want to think about pressing your hands back toward the back wall of your abdomen and breathing into your belly into those hands. If this is too much, just do a regular child pose. It can be a little intense, especially if we've got anything going on in that area. Two more breaths. As you exhale, this push back. As you inhale, release a bit. Last time. Good, and then slowly release. Then we'll come all the way up. All right, let's make our way into a seated position again. So grab that pillow or blanket, whatever you need to sit on. Just wanna see what we have time for here. Oh, there was something else I wanted to do. Okay. Grab a block or two. We're going to take a supported squat. So you might want to sit on two blocks, see how it feels for you. But we're just going to sit right on the block. Okay. Some of you might want two blocks. You could also sit on your bolster as another option. We're going to put our feet flat. Take the feet and turn them out a bit, if you can. And the knees are up, if that's okay for you guys. Yeah, so you might need a second block to sit up a little higher. Okay, so we'll sit up nice and tall and think about letting the tailbone descend. Lengthen through the crown of the head. And then we're gonna lean forward and bring the palms together inside the leg. Good. Press your legs into the arms, arms into the legs. 
Press your palms and lift your chest. All right, we're gonna take about five breaths here. Squatting, of course, is really great for our digestion. It lengthens the digestive tract. Um, some, <laughs> this is a funny story, but my daughter's always had um, digestive problems. So she uses a squatty potty. So very beneficial because before modern plumbing, this is the position we would take, but it does help her. So if you have digestive problems, it might be something worth investing in. It goes under your feet and helps you feel like you're more in a squat and encourages elimination. So we'll hold here another breath or two. Last one. The things yogis talk about. <laughs> Release your hands. We're going to take one more forward fold. After that squat. And then from here, come down and bring your knees to the ground. Pat those knees if you like. We're going to do camel pose. Go ahead and grab your two blocks and put them alongside of your feet or your shins. Put it back towards your heels. And if you can't easily touch them with your fingertips, instead of using the um, blocks, maybe put the bolster on the backs of your shins. That's another option. Okay. First, we're going to put hands on the belly. So this is our last active pose that we're going to restore. Lift the front of the belly with your hands. Pull the tailbone down. Keep that belly lifting as you start to come into a little back bend. Use your hands, pull up on the belly, and then try to lift your back rib cage off your pelvis. So you feel like you're stretching the front of the abdomen. And then release. Pause for a moment. If you want, you can sit on your heels if that works for you. Next round, we're going to try and go for the blocks. You can always repeat what we just did if you don't want to do the blocks. Okay? So, trying that again, hands to the belly. Lift the belly up, which helps lengthen the lower back. Hip points are lifting, belly lifting. Start your back bend, and then maybe fingertips to the blocks. Usually, our pelvis starts to dip back. I want you to move your pelvis forward and then lift through your heart space. Try to stretch your belly. One more breath. Good. Slowly release. And then we'll set those blocks off to the side. Okay, we're going to grab all of our props now. Grab your bolster. We want a little space for the head here. So leave space for your head. And at the other side where the head goes, you can put a pillow or fold it up like it. We're gonna do supported bridge. Okay, then we're gonna take our two blocks. And we're gonna put the two blocks in front of the bolster. And then we're gonna put a blanket on top Two blankets on top of that. There's one. And here's two. Okay? Because this is kind of making a second bolster. Actually, you guys probably have enough. I don't know how many bolsters were there. If you wanted to, you could just grab a second bolster instead of the block situation here. That's, that's available as well. But this will work. Okay, so now we're going to sit on the edge of the bolster, and the legs are going to go over the block setup. Your feet might hang off a little bit, that's okay. Now, to come down, I like to bend my knees for a moment and kind of scoot the tailbone forward, which will help lengthen your lower back. And then we come down, and the head is going to come to the prop. To the ground. So if this feels like a big drop off, you're going to want to put more support under your head. 
And then if you can, your legs are gonna go out straight. So bridge pose opens up the front of the abdomen. And then arms can be at your side, that's comfortable. If you find that this is too much with legs straight, you could keep your knees bent. You won't get as much stretch in your belly, but that's okay. It hurts your back. I'd rather have you not be in pain. But if it feels good, legs are going to come out straight. And if you want, you could kind of push that block set up a little bit more towards your feet if you feel like it's not supporting you enough. Your shoulder heads are kind of hanging off of the bolster and your head is all the way down toward the ground. Have as much support under your head as you need to be comfortable. And then send your breath into the front of your abdomen. I want you guys to just stay there another minute and we're going to have an opportunity to take it a little bit farther. Okay, now if this feels like it's probably already a lot for your body, you're going to stay there. If you feel like you could do a bit more of a back bend, you're going to slide more, bend your knees, and slide your shoulders all the way to the ground. So put your feet flat, push back, slide yourself so that your shoulders now come to the ground. And that's going to give you a little bit more back bend. If it's too much, then stick with where you were. Okay, so that's an option. Again, feet could be flat or take the legs out straight is going to give you more stretch in your belly or more length in those hip flexors as well. Tight hip flexors can also interfere with digestion. Send your breath into the belly. So a couple of more tips from my teacher on good digestion habits. Avoiding cold drinks and cold foods early in the morning for at least two hours. So we don't want those cold cereals, orange juice, things like that first thing in the morning. It is much more soothing to kickstart our digestion with a warm liquid. So a hot lemon water is a good recommendation or a hot tea, but avoiding caffeine if you can. I know it's a hard, a tall order. Um, avoid heavily processed food. We all know that, junk food. The more processed it is, the harder it is to digest and the more toxic it is. Avoid sugar refined processed foods that contain preservatives and additives. Avoiding caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, white flour, white sugar, white wheat. Eat a balanced diet with whole foods, minimal animal food, sea salt over refined salt, fresh and local whenever possible, and increasing our intake of fresh steamed veggies or crispy stir fried veggies. So the less cooked they are, you know, like they're just undercooked is best, but not extreme. So we don't want a lot of raw food or a lot of overly cooked food. So we find that middle ground is optimal for our digestion. Let's take three more breaths where you are.
Okay, after your third cycle of breath, let's go ahead and bend those knees again. No hurry. And you could slide yourself back more to come off, or you could kind of roll off of your props to come off. Just take your time. Be careful there. Good. And then you could hug your knees in, do a little rocking, a little knee circle. Happy baby. Let's take any finishing poses here before we find Shavasana. When you find Shavasana, you can use your props in any way you like. If you want the bolster under your back with a pillow under your head, or you could put it under your knees, or you could just come flat on your back. So feel free to choose what works for you. As we come into Shavasana, it's like the time of assimilation. Shavasana allows our bodies and our minds to digest and assimilate all the good work we just did in our practice. So let yourself find stillness, that soft breath in the belly. Let go of the hard work. When we digest well, we eliminate what doesn't serve us. And the residue that remains is nourishing, and is said to result in wisdom. If we are not digesting well, we can't extract that wisdom from our life experiences. So let the tissues, the brain, the nervous system process everything you just did. All this work on twisting, turning, folding, back bending in the abdomen, increasing our digestive fire.
Just continue to rest another minute or two. All right, so let's come back to awareness now. Noticing the effects of your practice. Beginning with just a deeper breath. And eventually inviting in those smaller movements. Try not to rush it. Taking all the time you need to move a little more before coming over to your side for that brief pause, coming up in your own time. And then we'll place our hands together in front of the heart space. Take a few breaths here. Maybe close your eyes. Have a moment of gratitude for this physical body, for all that it does for us. It's amazing ability to rid our bodies of anything we take in that is not helpful to us and for assimilating what is helpful to us. On your next inhale, allow the heart to lift and exhale, bowing your head to your heart. Namaste. Thank you, guys.